NASA's Messenger Discoveries Mercury, the overlooked planet that sits closest to the fiery furnace of the Sun, has a story to tell. For eons, it has been spinning around in a cosmic waltz with our solar system. Despite its incredible proximity to our life-giving star and its unique characteristics, this little planet is frequently neglected in scientific studies. But thanks to NASA's MESSENGER mission, we now have a wealth of knowledge about this mysterious planet. From its unique characteristics to the secrets it holds, MESSENGER has revealed a treasure trove of information that has captivated scientists and space enthusiasts alike. So what makes Mercury so special? What has MESSENGER taught us about this enigmatic world? Join us on a journey of discovery as we explore the incredible findings of NASA's MESSENGER mission and uncover the mysteries of this captivating planet. Mercury, the elusive and mysterious planet, is a world full of surprises. At first glance, you might think it's just a small, boring rock floating in space. But there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. In fact, this small planet is getting even smaller by shrinking. This is because its interior is cooling and contracting. As the planet's interior cools and solidifies, it takes up less space and causes the planet's surface to contract and form wrinkles, ridges, and cliffs. This process is called global contraction and is one of the most distinctive geological features of Mercury. The planet's diameter has decreased by around 14 kilometers, or 9 miles, over the last 4 billion years due to this global contraction. Let's take a closer look at its physical characteristics, shall we? First off, Mercury is indeed the closest planet to the Sun, but it's much more than just a giant rock. In fact, it's visually more appealing than our own Moon. Look at it in its true color, and you'll see that it's not just different shades of gray. It actually has a unique color. Did you also know that Mercury is made up of approximately 70% metallic and 30% silicate materials? That's right, it's more metallic than rocky. This high metallic content also gives Mercury the second highest density in the solar system, with only Earth having a slightly higher density. But what about its size? If Mercury were the same size as Earth, it would have almost the same gravitational pull on its surface. However, due to its smaller size, its surface gravity is only 3.7 meters per second squared, which is only slightly less than what you'd find on Mars. That just goes to show how dense Mercury really is. Speaking of size, did you know that Ganymede and Titan, the two biggest moons in the solar system, are actually larger than Mercury? But their masses are much less, which just goes to show how dense and compact Mercury really is. But let's not forget about its surface. One of the most distinctive things about Mercury is its huge crater called Caloris Basin, with a diameter of 1,550 kilometers. The impact that created this basin was so powerful that it caused lava eruptions and left a concentric ring over two kilometers tall surrounding the impact crater. And on the opposite side of Caloris Basin, there's an unusual hilly terrain known as the Weird Terrain. So what's it like on the surface of Mercury? When it comes to surface temperature, Mercury is quite the wild card. It can range from a bone-chilling minus 173 degrees Celsius to a scorching hot 400 degrees Celsius. Talk about extremes. And don't even get us started on the poles, where the temperatures never rise above minus 93 degrees. Why the temperature fluctuations, you ask? Well, it's all thanks to Mercury's orbit and rotation. The subsolar point can reach a sizzling 400 degrees, while the dark side of the planet chills at an average of minus 163 degrees. Mercury is too small and hot for its gravity to retain any significant atmosphere over long periods of time, so it can't hold onto any heat from being so close to the Sun. But don't count Mercury out just yet. It may not have a thick atmosphere, but it does have an exosphere, which is like an extremely thin atmospheric layer surrounding the planet. Think of it as a protective shield against the solar wind that rips off certain atoms out of the atmosphere, leaving behind a trail of atoms going into space. We call this the planet's tail, 
and every planet has one to a certain extent. Earth even has an exosphere, but it starts at 600 kilometers above the surface. Now here's where things get really interesting. Mercury has the most eccentric orbit of all the planets, ranging from 46 million kilometers to 70 million kilometers from the Sun. That's like driving from New York to Los Angeles and back in a single day. Okay, maybe not quite that extreme, but you get the idea. It takes about 88 Earth days for Mercury to complete an orbit around the Sun, and it spins three times around its axis for every two times that it orbits. So if you were standing on Mercury, one solar day would be two Mercurian years. Imagine watching the Sun rise relatively fast, then slow down and even go backwards before continuing on to sunset. It would take a whole year to experience one day and one night on Mercury. Do you want to know how we gathered a lot of information about Mercury? And how we explored it in the past? When mankind first started exploring the solar system, Venus was our first destination in 1962, followed by Mars in 1965, and then Jupiter in 1973. It wasn't until 1974 that Mercury was finally visited, and by then, it was long overdue. So why did it take so long for us to send a probe to Mercury? Well, it's not just because Mercury is a bit of a hothead. It turns out that Mercury is one of the most challenging planets to visit in our entire solar system. Due to its proximity to the Sun, its surface temperature reaches highs of 430 degrees Celsius, making it a bit of a furnace. Any probe visiting Mercury would need to be highly heat resistant. But that's not all. Because Mercury is so close to the Sun, any probe launched towards it will accelerate faster and faster due to the immense gravitational pull from our star. Combating the Sun's gravity required too much fuel for a Discovery-class spacecraft to carry, which meant slowing down the spacecraft enough to be caught up in Mercury's orbit seemed impossible. It was a question of weight. Weight is a challenging limitation when it comes to spacecraft. The heavier a craft, the larger a rocket needed to get it out of Earth's orbit, and the more expensive everything becomes. Scientists try to keep everything as light as possible to reduce this cost. As fuel takes up precious weight allocations that could go towards scientific instruments, scientists try to take only what is necessary to help them complete their journey. For about 30 years, scientists could think of no way to put enough fuel on a probe to get it to slow down enough to enter Mercury's orbit, especially if they wanted scientific equipment on board too. Just as we discussed in the last video, Voyager did not directly observe Mercury during its mission, as its trajectory took it primarily through the outer solar system. However, it did capture some images of the inner solar system during its flyby of Jupiter, which included a glimpse of Mercury in the distance. Additionally, NASA's Mariner 10 spacecraft made three flybys of Mercury in the mid-1970s and provided the first close-up images of the planet. So, after the success of Mariner 10's flyby missions of Mercury in 1974 to 1975, Mercury exploration was put on hold. But in 1985, an orbital mechanics expert named Chen Wan Yen came up with a clever solution she realized that there was a way of getting a probe into orbit around Mercury that didn't require a new technology. Instead, she had worked out a particular route an orbiter could take around the solar system that would slow it down enough to enter Mercury's orbit with only a few course corrections. Under Chen Wanyan's model, a craft would orbit the Sun about 15 times, flying past Earth once, Venus twice, and Mercury three times, before finally slowing down enough to enter its orbit on the fourth pass. All these planetary flybys would be essential. By skimming the planet's atmospheres, vital speed could be shaved off, from atmospheric drag and due to the gravity of the planets. The entire route would cover a mammoth 7.9 billion kilometers and would take six and a half years. Chen Wanyan's findings were not immediately picked up but in 1998, NASA began to take an interest in the idea. After seeing the feasibility of the route, they launched the MESSENGER probe in 2004. MESSENGER, or the Mercury Surface, Space Environment, Geochemistry, and Ranging Probe, was only 1.2 metric tons, which is significantly lighter than many of the other spacecraft that have been sent into space. 
This was due to the fact that Mercury has a much lower gravitational pull than Earth, so the spacecraft did not need to be as heavy to stay in orbit. Messenger was launched on August 3, 2004, from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. It took the spacecraft over six years to travel the distance to Mercury. During its journey, Messenger used the gravity of Earth, Venus, and Mercury to help it maneuver into orbit around the planet. Once in orbit around Mercury, Messenger was able to conduct a wide range of scientific studies and experiments. These included mapping the planet's surface, studying its magnetic field, analyzing the composition of its atmosphere, and investigating its geology and mineralogy. Messenger also made several flybys of Mercury, allowing it to take detailed measurements of the planet's surface features, such as craters, mountains, and valleys. One of the most significant discoveries made by Messenger was the presence of water ice on Mercury's surface. This was unexpected, as Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun and has extremely high surface temperatures. However, scientists believe that water ice may be present in permanently shadowed craters on Mercury's poles, where the temperatures are much colder. Messenger operated for over four years in orbit around Mercury until its mission came to an end on April 30, 2015, when the spacecraft intentionally crashed onto the surface of the planet. All this was done to ensure that the spacecraft did not collide with any of Mercury's moons or contaminate the planet with Earth-based microbes. Before it died, Messenger spacecraft gave us fascinating insights into Mercury's magnetosphere and exosphere. Mercury's magnetic field, generated by the dynamo effect in its molten core, is offset from the center by about 20% of the planet's radius. Despite being only about 1% as strong as Earth's, it still deflects a lot of the solar wind around the planet. Messenger discovered that the magnetosphere of Mercury is highly dynamic, with 100 times more reconnection events than around Earth. Mercury's exosphere contains volatile substances like potassium, magnesium, sulfur, sodium, and chlorine, which are blasted by radiation from the sun. This exosphere is not stable, as solar wind picks up charged particles and solar light pressure pushes neutral particles away. Messenger discovered that the exosphere of Mercury is not entirely composed of substances from its surface, but also contains hydrogen and helium from the sun. Also, scientists believe that due to extremely high temperatures, Mercury has experienced volcanic activity. They have found craters on Mercury, like Raditladi, which have smooth surfaces. This is a sign that the craters were once filled with lava. When lava cools, it forms a flat surface, just like water does when it's in a bowl. So the smooth surfaces inside craters are a telltale sign of past lava flows. There are numerous craters on Mercury that have been filled with lava, like Rustavelli, Copeland, Polygnotus, and Rachmaninoff. In fact, some of these craters have even experienced deep volcanic activity triggered by collisions from space. Speaking of volcanic activity on planets, have you heard about the upcoming Bepi Colombo mission in 2025? This exciting mission is set to continue studying Mercury, a planet that has fascinated scientists for years with its unique surface features, including hollows and giant ray systems. The Bepi Colombo mission is set to uncover even more mysteries about this intriguing planet, and perhaps shed more light on the volcanic activity that shaped its surface. But don't worry, we will cover more stories about this upcoming mission in our next videos. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure to subscribe to our channel and find more content like this here.